you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Pallanti, according to the information provided to the committee by the library, you took a trip to Los Angeles in November of last year, and during that trip you met with motion picture studio lawyers. Now, one day after you returned from L.A., you testified before the House Judiciary Committee about the Stop Online Piracy Act and essentially endorsed the bill. SOPA was an extreme measure which blindly pursued copyright enforcement at the expense of many other considerations. And of course, as we're all aware, uh, the bill sparked a massive protest from uh, some have said 14 million Americans and the bill uh, did not uh, proceed. Did you discuss SOPA in your meeting with the motion picture uh, studio lawyers? Uh, who attended the meeting? Uh, what uh, subjects were discussed? What was the substance of the discussion? Thank you, Ranking Member. Uh, yes, in fact, that trip was cut short because of the hearing. I had to return early. I would have, I was out there for a bar association meeting, and whenever I'm out anywhere in any city other than Washington, I try to do side meetings to maximize my, my time. So uh, in that case, uh, that was a meeting that we set up. My general counsel and my associate registrar were with me for the purpose of reaching beyond the trade associations that normally visit us in Washington. So this is something that I've been advised to do uh, in getting advice as a new register. Make sure you meet with the members of associations, not just the associations and their well, government <coughs> relations people. So in that meeting, um, we talked primarily about the priorities who of special projects who, who attended the meeting? There were member company business lawyers there. So uh, the lawyers of uh, Warner Brothers, the lawyers of uh, Paramount, the lawyers of major studios. Would you provide uh, later, obviously you mm -hmm. don't recall the names and that's fine, uh, if you could provide a list of all of the attendees at that meeting. Yes, certainly. At this hearing, that would be helpful. Now, did you discuss SOPA at, the, at that meeting? Well, we, again, we discussed the priorities and special projects document and rogue websites because it was a priority for the leadership of judiciary is one of the priorities that I've had to make my own. And so, yes, in that context, it would have been one of many things we discussed. Um, in recent remarks published by the American Bar Association, you said the following, quote, Copyright is for the author first and the nation second, unquote. Now, this comment attracted uh, quite a bit of attention among some people, uh, especially my constituents in Silicon Valley. And it seems to me when you look at the Constitution, which empowers Congress to grant exclusive rights in creative works in order, and I quote, to promote the progress of science and the useful arts, it seems to me the Constitution is very clear that copyright does not exist inherently for the author, but for the benefit of society at large. Now, I'm concerned when any public official, especially one in charge of regulation of a particular industry or area of law, seems to favor particular stakeholders in that very industry. We'd be alarmed, for example, if the chairman of the FCC said the Telecommunications Act was for the telecom companies first and the nation a second. And it's, it's not clear to me how your statement, if it was accurately reported, is any uh, different. So could you tell us what you meant by this statement and how this principle guides your work as well? I would be delighted to. Thank you. Uh, so <coughs> when I took the job, I was required to take an oath to uphold the Constitution and the laws of the United States. Uh, the Constitutional Clause to promote the progress of science and the useful arts works in part by, quote, securing for limited times to authors their respective writings and discoveries. What I was doing in that interview, and you've extracted one sentence from a four-page interview, was making the point that the Supreme Court has interpreted that clause, including in two recent decisions, Eldred and Golan, in the last year, that the limited monopoly goes first to authors so that they will produce, so that in the end, the public will benefit. I think that's a real misstatement of the Eldred case. The Eldred case basically <laughs> had to do with the jurisdiction of Congress. Mm -hmm. It didn't find that the, um, the benefit was to authors instead of society. It basically was uh, a finding that Congress was not limited by the words um, uh, for limited periods for the extreme measure that we've done now, life of the author plus uh, 70 years. Let me ask you this. 
Um, according to the information, well, my time has expired, Mr. Chairman. I'll ask my other questions at the second round. Oh, 